What's going on, everybody? It's Monday. Time for Swift News. Quick announcement before we begin. Uh, there'll definitely be no episodes for the next two weeks as I'm going out of town, but I'm going to use that time to kind of reevaluate the show. Now, the reason I started Swift News was because I was reading all these articles anyway, just because I was curious, interested, passionate, and, you know, why not share the best ones of the week? That was the whole idea behind Swift News. But if you've seen the most recent podcast, I talk about how other interests are starting to kind of dominate my mind share more so than development. So long story short, like I'm not scouring the internet reading iOS articles all the time anymore. So now I only do that to build this show. So if I'm being completely honest, uh, it's more of a chore now than it is a joy. And I wanna spend time working on stuff that I'm like genuinely excited about. So I'm gonna reassess the show. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it like once a month, once every two weeks, or if at all, I'm not making any promises. I'm gonna put a lot of thought into it over the next two weeks, uh, but just wanted to put that out there. And I wanna thank everyone that like always tweets and always leaves a comment how this is the highlight of their Monday. They love the show. To be honest, that's what's kept me going for the past few weeks. This would have happened weeks ago, but I kept seeing those comments and I'm like, ah, I can't stop. But again, at the end of the day, like I, I gotta work on stuff I'm excited about. So I'm not saying like all iOS videos are going away, just the, the weekly grind of Swift news and scouring the internet for all these articles and putting it together. Uh, we're gonna take a break from that. Is it a forever break? I don't know, not making any promises, but wanted to put that out there and let you know. All right, let's drop the rundown and uh, get into this maybe final show. Who knows what's gonna happen? To kick things off, we have the results of the iOS developer community survey. And if you followed the show for a while, we did this last year too, but this is the new 2020 results that come out in 2021, obviously. Uh, but again, just thousands, let's see the number here, right? Uh, 1,200 uh, people filled out the questionnaire that are iOS developers. So, you know, just some context on how many people filled it out, but you can see the categories, right? Uh, conferences and meetups, your career, development, augmented reality, Swift UI. Uh, let's go to your career see that a little bit, but you can see like how long have you been involved and you can see kind of the, uh, you know, the results of the survey. Another one everybody's always interested in, right? Let's scroll down. Uh, basically the how much money you made, right? How much income have you earned as a salary from creating apps in the past 12 months? You can see the breakdown there uh, on the screen. And then similarly, you know, how much have you earned from indie apps? You know, most people less than 10,000, you can see all basically none, none or less than uh, 10,000 make up 92.8%. <laughs> so not many people making money from indie apps, but that's the kind of information you can get uh, out of the survey. And again, that was just the career category, you know, with Swift UI, I haven't clicked into this one yet. So this will be like completely new. Uh, rate your current personal level of interest in Swift UI. You can see a lot of people in the seven, eight, nine, ten 10 range. But again, this is the kind of information uh, you can get from this survey. Next up, I wanted to share a new side project from Jordan Morgan called The Daily iOS. And essentially it's a Twitter uh, account you can follow. Uh, let's actually go to the Twitter account here, Daily iOS here. Um, so yeah, it's this Twitter account you can follow that basically tweets out every day, kind of a random technical uh, piece of the Apple documentation, right? And the reason I like this is because it's like, you know, you, it's impossible to know every single API, every single little thing that's out there. So sure, I may not be that interested in adding attachment metadata to a message right now, but again, seeing all these tweets, and we'll keep scrolling down past the ads here, uh, implementing user authentication with sign-in with Apple. Okay, you know, that's something I might be interested in, providing trusted data. But anyway, it's just kind of like random documentation and APIs that uh, the way I look at it anyway is, I mean, yeah, you might hit the lottery and it's exactly what you're looking for at that time, but I'm gonna use this as like just ideas. Oh, I didn't even know that existed. That's cool and kind of like make a little note or maybe it'll spark an idea for a feature or, or a completely new app, who knows? But that's what I like about it. Just kind of put this little information uh, in front of my eyes every day and you know, probably 90% of the time I'll just keep scrolling, no big deal. But again, that 10% might trigger a great idea. Moving on, I wanted to share this because it's a personal pet peeve of mine, is how people initialize empty arrays. And uh, first of all, this is from Ben Cohen, who's on the Swift core team, so pretty much from the horse's mouth. But there was this poll from Ole Begeman. Uh, we'll show this poll here. Which Swift syntax do you prefer like when initializing your array? 
And by far, you see the VAR A. I don't know if that's coming through because of the blue and white contrast. Um, but you know, you have the uh, empty array of type int, and then you do the initial initializer parentheses. And that was 74% of the people. However, a lot of people chimed in in the comments. You know, Stuart Lynch, uh, Swifty McSwiftface, none of the above. You know, this initializer, and that's how I've always done it. I just mainly for looks, if I'm being completely honest, because I don't understand all the compiler stuff that Ben is about to get into. Um, I just think that looks cleaner, and neater, and easier to read, more consistent, all that stuff. But a lot of people chimed in, said none of the above do it that way, do it that way. So again, back to uh, Ben's tweet here, again, from the Swift team. He says, why you should prefer basically doing it that way, a thread. So again, this is my selfish reason uh, to share this. So when I work in a code base, hopefully I see it like this and not all the other ways, because it drives me nuts. But uh, anyway, uh, ben basically goes into all the reasons, a lot of compiler stuff. Again, I'm not familiar with compilers. I don't really know how they all work and all the inner workings of all that. So I'm not going to pretend like I do. But uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff and you want to read Ben's thread, definitely check that out. Or if you just want to take their word for it and start initializing your arrays like this, that would make me happy. Next up, we have an article from Gary Talkman, 50 iOS dev tools uh, just to help you out here. And I'm a sucker for these types of lists, to be honest with you. Uh, quick disclaimer, most of these tools are free, uh, but some of them are like paid apps, just the heads up here. But you know, it breaks it down. Design tools, you got Figma, Mobbin, Undraw, Lottie files, uh, developer tools, the, you know, the usual suspects here, Fastlane, SwiftGen. And again, it's a whole just big list of this stuff that you can click and check out. And again, I'm a sucker for just scrolling through this stuff and, you know, clicking on stuff I've never heard of just to learn about like what's out there, right? And then, you know, uh, cheat sheets, all kinds of iOS cheat sheets. So again, just developer tools. Uh, Swift News is on here. That's what I'm trying to get to, right? I'm, I'm that vain. I gotta, I gotta see my name, right? <laughs> no, so that's kind of like all the different resources. But again, just a... Again, I'm a sucker for any time somebody puts together a list like this just to scroll through and, you know, click on what I find interesting. Moving on, we have a thread from uh, Fernando here from Junior to Senior, the iOS Roadmap. And real quick, don't get hung up on the definition of senior and junior. Like, I've said this a thousand times. If you ask... 10 developers, their definition of a senior developer, you're going to get 10 different answers. So don't get hung up on this like junior, senior title, what you should know and all that stuff. Because uh, again, kind of subjective. But what I wanted to share this thread uh, for was because it's just good stuff to learn, right? If, you, if you're like past the basics, you're, you've just started learning Swift, you've been learning for a couple months, you feel like you got the basics down and you're kind of wondering where to go next, that's what I think this thread uh, is great for. Uh, and you can kind of scroll through it, right? Practice foundation, learn about Swift and underlying concepts, debugging, and he goes into like detail on each of these uh, topics, right? Like what's this one? Uh, you know, you've used initializer structs, enums, closures, uh, GCD protocols. You can explain like how that all works, you know, explaining arc, all that good stuff, debugging. You should be able to hop into an existing code base and be able to navigate around, set breakpoints, debug. Anyway, Fernando just gives you a nice list of, uh, concepts, you know, understanding how and the key thing here, when to use third parties. I think that's the bigger thing. Don't rely on third parties too much. Knowing when to use them is a valuable skill. So anyway, great thread on some topics that if you're kind of at that beginner stage and you're looking to take that next step, uh, this is a great place to kind of get some ideas on what to learn next. Moving on to AR Corner, uh, we have a tweet here from MechPilot, basically playing Tetris on the side of a building. Uh, again, those AR glasses are going to be like an acid trip. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I thought that was fun. And then another one from Dominic here, uh, AR navigation. Now we've seen this kind of navigation before, right? Where you put the line on the sidewalk and you follow. That's nothing new. However, what was new about this was this kind of little like cloud of the 3D version of the city that gives you a little bit of extra context on like where you're going. So you can kind of see the city blocks and all that stuff. So I thought that was like uh, really cool and it gives you the directions there. So that was a neat little addition to the typical navigation we've seen. That'll be pretty cool. And then finally, the LOLs of the week, uh, Sad But True, a $70 computer game. Yeah, I'll take two. Uh, 99 cent mobile app. <laughs> Can the treasury bear such expense? I don't know. And then finally, the uh, most accurate meme you'll ever see, at least for me, programming. And then programming while someone watches. I don't think I need to commentate on that one. Enough said. All right, that wraps it up for this week's episode. Uh, I'm sure I'll see you again in other videos. Maybe in Swift News, maybe not. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see you later.